Hi there, guys. So um, today we're going to talk about um, transforming data. And um, I, I want to address the question of why transform data. But I guess first I ought to kind of say what it is. So as you know, you have a data set which will have observations, one, two, three, four, five, etc all up to your however many observations you've made. And you're going to have x variables, which are the classes that they observations belong to, etc. Um, and then you're going to have y variables. And some of these y variables will be continuous. Some might be nominal. Um, so you're going to have things like this. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm just making up numbers here. Um, but I'm going to illustrate a problem, and that is that um, you look at these numbers and you start to realize, whoa, those are not normally distributed, right? Because you have a couple of really large outliers and then um, ones that are piled up near a particular value. And this is particularly true with biological data. Biological data can often be a little bit messy, and we can have a few outliers um, that are extremely large or whatever. And, um, and our data don't necessarily behave the way our tests require them to behave. So recall that our parametric tests, many of them will require uh, a uh, normal distribution of what? Not the data, of the residuals, right? So, so we have normally distributed residuals and um, that means that when we don't, uh, our, our tests are suspect at best and maybe wrong uh, and misleading uh, at worst. So we don't want that. We want our data to conform to our assumptions of our test. So what we're going to do is we're going to transform our data. And one rule of transformation is, of course, that you have to what you do to one data point, you have to do to all of the data points. And so, for example, um, we might have a transformation, which is a log transformation, in which we would take log of 1.1. Well, obviously, we're going to have to take uh, the log of all of these, right? And, uh, oops, 1.2, that one's still 1.2, this one is 0 0.9. Anyway, we're going to have to take the log of all of these numbers, um, and, and the reason for doing this is we're trying to get our data to conform to a normal distribution. Now, doesn't that seem kind of arbitrary? I know that when people first see this, they say, wait a minute here, you're, you're changing your data. Well, you're changing the distribution of your data. Um, you're also potentially changing the means and so forth. Obviously, the log of the mean of something is going to be different than the mean itself. Um, so... Um, yes, you're transforming your data, but you're doing the same thing to every observation. And so relatively, things aren't going to shift. You're going to have the mean of the untransformed data be in a different order than the mean of the transformed data because you're applying the same function to it. If the function does that to it, obviously, uh, that's not a good transformation to use. But if the function is just uh, transforming it so that uh, everything's in the same relative order, but maybe has a better distributional quality so that our test can work, then fine. So let me give an example. Um, and, and this is a very common one in biological data is that, so if we look at our, our Y value, and, and again, we're gonna really be talking about residuals here, but I'm just gonna plot Y values. Just remember that <laughs> it's always the residuals that we worry about. Um, very often a distribution will look something like this. And, and so, for example, if I put a, actually a scale on this, let's put uh, 10, 20, 30. I'm not going to draw all of these out here, but I have you know, a few values that are very large, say 100. Okay? Um, I could do a transformation on this that will make this look normal. This is obviously not normal. I have way more values out on this tail of the distribution than I do in this one. Um, the distribution is skewed, remember that term? Okay, so um, what kind of a transformation do you think might make this look normal? Well, uh, 
One that you might try right away is a, a natural log transformation or um, log base 10. I'm going to use log base 10 just because it's easier for you to see. Typically in biology we use log, the natural log or log to the base E. Um, and, and there are lots of reasons for that, but basically log transformations all do the same kind of thing. Um, so for example, what would uh, that look like now? So remember what we're plotting here is the frequency of observations as a function of their value. And so um, we have down here the log, um, the log base 10 of 10. If you need to review your logarithms, please do. But what exponent would we raise this to to get that? is what we're asking. 10 to the what power equals 10? Well, it's obviously 1, right? So um, our, our transformed log to the base 10 of y is 1. And if we take our 20 here and put that on, what do we have? Oh, I figured it out. It's about 1.3, right? And if we take our 100 over here, what is that? So log to the base 10 of 100. What power do we raise 10 to to get 100? Ah, 10 squared, so it's 2. All right, so I'm going to plot this relatively here. So we have 2. All right, so we have a few observations at 2. We have even more observations at 1. Um, and our peak is at 1.3. Okay. All right, so suddenly something that was skewed far to the right over here now looks much more normal. And in fact, um, this transformation works quite often with biological data because of the nature of um, the nonlinearity of things like growth, where you get large individuals getting much larger, small individuals staying small, not growing very fast, etc. Things like that. Um, so uh, log distribution, is, is one that you might try and typically we would use the natural log transformation. I'm just illustrating it because it's easy to see that log base 10 of 10 is 1 and log base 10 of 100 is 2. So nice, easy to plot. But typically we would do ln. All right, so the purpose of doing this, remember, is to improve the normality of residuals. And we've done that. We have a mean of 1.3 here, and look, our deviations from the mean of the log of y, in other words, our y prime, our transformed data, looks much better. Um, so what do we do with that? Okay, so what's our procedure when we're actually performing some kind of parametric test? Okay, so remember it's the normality of residuals. So what we want to do is we want to um, let the model be y is a function of x and we actually set up set that up and jump no matter and by the way this applies to continuous x and y or nominal x continuous y um, so y is our dependent variable x is our group or our continuous x variable um, we run the model now the reason we run the model is that we therefore uh, get the residuals that way, jump knows what our hypothesized groups are, or our x variable, and it can then calculate the residuals. If it doesn't know that, it can't, can't save the residuals, but it can't calculate them because it doesn't know what we're including as our x variable. So we have to tell it what our model is. Um, then we test the normality of the residuals. And, um, and of course that's done with the Shapiro Wilk W test and I'm going to show you that in class and you can find it in jump yourself if you want to. Um, if non-normal, so if we reject normality, then step five is we transform the data. And remember we transform all the data we don't transform the residuals, that's silly, because the mean of the residual, residuals for different groups is zero. And so we're obviously going to get you know, no differences in our test. We transform the original data, not the residuals. 
And then we go back and repeat. Um, we repeat this process, iterate this process, now using y prime. Run the model, save the residuals, test for normality. If non-normal, we transform the data again, maybe use a different transformation, repeat this step. So you can see that this is a, a process that is, um, we go through these steps and we repeat it. We're always testing normality of residuals, but we're transforming the data. So that's a very important thing. Um, I'm going to show you the Shapiro World W test. It's an interesting test. Uh, it's a test where W equals 1 equals perfect normality, and you never get that with real data, real world data, and limited sample size. So you never get perfect normality. Uh, w um, significantly less than 1 is non normal. So it's one of those interesting cases. Our null hypothesis is w equals 1, and we can reject that if w is less than 1. So the test is whether w is less than 1. The p-value, for example, 0.02, would say this is non-normal. And a p-value of 0.08 would say this is a normal distribution. We can't reject the null hypothesis of normality. Um, so that's kind of interesting. This is a case where non-significance is what we're hoping for in a way. I remember I told you not to hope for a particular outcome, but um, we won't have to transform data. And not transforming data is simpler, easier to present in results and so forth, um, because transforming data uh, involves uh, a little more complex process when we want to go back and present the data, right? Because we don't want to generally present logged results. We want to go back and present the original results, and that involves back transformation. We'll get to that in another video, I believe, or at least in class. All right, so we uh, kind of hope <laughs> that we don't have to transform, but if we do, we just go through this process and we transform data. Now, I just want to mention a few kinds of transformations um, briefly here. And again, we'll go over this uh, <clears throat> in class. Uh, kinds of transformations. I mentioned the log transformation um, first because um, it is, boy, of all the transformations, I've used that one the most. Um, occasionally, a square root transformation works better. Um, so if the log doesn't work, but you seem to have a distribution that's skewed to the right like that, you might try a square root transformation. And by the way, I mean, square root is just y to the 1 half, right? So that's a kind of a power transformation. If the data are skewed to the left, you might try um, another power transformation, which makes the small values larger, uh, y squared or y cubed might be your transformation. So, um, and by the way, there's a general approach to using uh, power transformations uh, to find the optimal one, and that's called the Box-Cox transformation. It's actually a procedure built into jump to find that optimal um, exponent. So that can be an interesting one. Um, you can look it up in Sokol and Rolf text uh, if you'd like or online, um, but it's actually a function that's built into jump. Another one that's used for proportions quite often, and it's kind of a standard one for proportions, that is values between 0 and 1, um, is the arc sine square root transformation. It seems like an odd one, right? But for some reason, I'm not going to go into the details of that now, um, the, the angle whose sine is the square root of y works sometimes as a transformation, which you can use uh, to uh, solve misbehaving uh, uh, ratios where the denominator is bigger than the numerator. So proportions. Um, are quite often where that works, but it, even any other kind of ratio where the denominator is bigger than the numerator, uh, it can work. Um, ratios are often a problem. As you can imagine, you have a normally distributed numerator and denominator, and the denominator can get very big, and the fraction can only go down to zero, but if the numerator gets big, the fraction can get huge. Think about that. Um, so ratios are often a problem one 
um, that produces odd ones. Okay, so transformations, all kinds of transformations are done simply to make our data conform. Remember our residuals of y prime conform to a nice normal distribution. And we test that with a Shapiro Wilk W test. And um, I'll talk more about that in class when we actually go to apply this uh, uh, with SAS Jump. Uh, but Shapiro Wilk W is a rather strange little test. And sometimes um, you get a high W and you get P less than 0.05. And sometimes you get a lower W and P is uh, greater than 0.05, which is rather odd, but you have to take some of these results into context so uh, of, your, of your sample and so forth. All right, I don't want to go into the shapiro wilk w test here. I just want to talk about transformations and how you go about it. So just remember, you're transforming the data. You're testing the normality of residuals. Okay, great.